Here I've got a nice little number theory type problem, and it's really solving what is called a quadratic Diophantine equation. Okay, so our goal is to determine all a, b, and c, which are integers, satisfying the following equation. So we've got a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to a squared times b squared. So what I like about this is that we're mixing this combination of these squares via addition on the left-hand side with multiplication on the right-hand side. So before we get started, I want to note that there is a very clear and easy solution, which is a equals b equals c equals zero. And so we'll consider only solutions that are not of that form because we get that one almost for free just by inspection. Another thing that we'll notice as we get going is that there's some sort of symmetry within the solutions. If we have a solution for a positive value of a, then we also have a solution for the corresponding negative value of a because a is only showing up in our equation as being squared. And similarly for b and c. Okay, we'll use the following kind of number theory facts or tricks, if you will, also. So the first is that perfect squares are only congruent to 0 or 1 mod 4. So in other words, if you divide a perfect square by 4, your only possible remainders are 0 or 1. It's impossible to have a remainder of 2 or 3. And that's because if you square an even number, you get a multiple of 4. That's pretty clear. And if you square an odd number, you get this multiple of 4 plus 1. So this is a really powerful trick that gets used a lot. Another thing that we'll use is the fact that there's no sequence of natural numbers that is strictly decreasing for all n. And so that's pretty clear because the natural numbers form this discrete set and it's bounded below. So if you're always decreasing, you're going to run out of natural numbers at some point. Okay, so let's maybe get into the solution. So we'll start by assuming that we have a, b, and c are all bigger than zero. Now, if we find solutions like this, then we'll also have solutions for the corresponding negative values of a, b, and c, but we can plug those in at the end. Next, we're gonna break this into a couple of cases. So our first case will be a and b are odd. Okay. But what does that tell us? That tells us that a squared is congruent to b squared, which is congruent to one modulo four. Okay, but now that tells us that a squared times b squared is congruent to one mod four. That's pretty clear because we're multiplying two things that are one mod four, and then a squared plus b squared is congruent to two mod four because one plus one is two. Okay, but now these are supposed to be the same mod four. But the only way for these two to be the same mod four is for this c squared to be congruent to three mod four. So why is that? That's because we need a squared plus b squared plus c squared to be congruent to a squared b squared mod four. Well, we need them to be just like straight up equal, but if they're equal, they're congruent mod four. But notice that that tells us that c squared is congruent to three mod four, but that's impossible by this little fact that we noted over here. So it's impossible for a and b to both be odd. So that tells us that a or b is even. Okay, so now that we've got that taken care of, let's maybe get rid of this first case and we'll jump into the case when A is even or B is even. So we just determined it's impossible for A and B to simultaneously be odd. That means one of them is even. Since they're playing symmetric roles in our equation, we might as well just look at the case when A is even. So that's what we'll do. So if A is even, that tells us that A squared is congruent to zero mod four, but that tells us that A squared times B squared is also congruent to zero modulo four. But now putting these two things together, along with our equation, which is satisfied, that tells us that B squared plus C squared must be congruent to zero mod four. 
Again, because a squared times b squared and a squared are both zero mod four. Just plugging that in here, but then reducing mod four. Okay, but if b squared plus c squared is congruent to zero mod four, notice that that means that b and c are even. Well, why is that? Well, notice if b is odd and c is even, then the left-hand side would be one mod four. If C were odd and B was even, again, it's one mod four. And if they're both odd, then it's two mod four. So the only way we can get that the sum of these squares is zero mod four is for both of them to be even. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind. So we know that A is even, B is even, and C is even. Okay, so that means we can write the following. We'll write A as two times X one, B as two times Y one, and C as two times Z one. And then we'll plug that back into our original equation. So notice that tells us that four X one squared plus four Y one squared plus four Z one squared is equal to 16 X one squared times Y one squared. Now we can divide both sides by four. That tells us that x1 squared plus y1 squared plus z1 squared is equal to four x1 squared y1 squared. But now let's reduce this mod four again. Notice the right hand side is clearly zero mod four. But the only way for this left hand side to be zero mod four is for each of these guys to individually be even. If one of them is odd, then that'll be one mod four. If two of them are odd, that'll be two mod four. If three of them are odd, that'll be three mod four. So they all have to be even. So that means we can write x1 as two times x2. We can write y1 as two times y2. And we can write z1 as two times z2. And now notice, since we've got x1 is 2x2, that means x2 is strictly less than x1. And similarly, y2 is strictly less than y1, and z2 is strictly less than z1. So it looks like we're flirting with creating a sequence of natural numbers that is strictly decreasing, which is impossible. But we've only got a couple of terms in this. So let's maybe bring this to the top and then sketch out how we'll create the rest of the sequence. So let's see where we are so far. So we showed that A, B, and C were all even. So that means A was 2X1, B was 2Y1, and C was 2Z1. Then we showed that X1, Y1, and Z1 also had to be even. So X1 was 2X2, and then so on and so forth. Furthermore, X1, Y1, and Z1 satisfied that equation which is in blue. So let's see what this blue box equation looks like with our substitution in terms of x2, y2, and z2. So we've got 4x2 squared plus 4y2 squared plus 4z2 squared is equal to, so that's going to be 16 from the x1, y1 squared, and then another 4, so that'll be 64x2 squared, y2 squared. We can divide by four. That'll give us x2 squared plus y2 squared plus z2 squared equals 16x2 squared y2 squared. Again, that's congruent to zero mod four. But since that's congruent to zero mod four, x2, y2, and z2 are all even. That's again, the only way to become zero mod four. That means x2 is equal to two x3 y2 is equal to 2y3, and z2 is equal to 2z3. So let's see what we've done. So continuing, so continuing, we create three sequences of natural numbers. So we'll call them xn, yn, zn, they're all in natural numbers, and they satisfy the following rules, where xn plus one is equal to two times xn, uh, yn plus one is equal to two times yn, and finally zn plus one is equal to two zn. Okay, 
But since xn plus 1 is equal to 2xn, that tells us that we have an infinite sequence. We in fact have three infinite sequences, but we might as well just use one of them. So we have an infinite sequence xn, which is a subset of natural numbers, and it is strictly decreasing. But that's impossible by this little thing that we were called earlier. So that forms a contradiction. And you might say, well, what is our contradiction? Our contradiction started way back up here where we assumed we had a solution that was non-zero. So that means we in fact do not have a solution which is non-zero. And thus, this easy solution is the only solution. And that's a good place to stop.